Hello, this is Philip Baldwin. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to etch and patent a Argentium Copper Mokumegane Cusco pattern. Uh, to do this, we're going to perform several operations. Because there are almost always thermal operations in making a piece of jewelry, we're going to be soldering a finding on a piece of Mokumegane, doing a post-soldering surface treatment. We're going to etch the material, and we're going to then patinate it. In making a piece of jewelry, usually we need to start out with a shape. And in this case, we're going to use a disc cutter because it's going to give us a nice round disc very quickly for the purposes of demonstration. And using a shim, approximately the thickness of the metal, and our piece of Mokumegane right here. And I want the burr to be on the back side, on the silver side. I'm putting it in reverse and hitting with a brass hammer. And there's our blank. Now we're going to form it. A dapping tool and a dapping punch. That looks about right. Sometimes it's best to start out with a larger diameter than you need, work it down. Want to make sure you get all the corners. Make a little bit smaller radius. There we are. Our next step is to solder a finding on this, uh, what will become a tie tack. All jewelry, with the exception of bracelets and rings, necklaces requires, usually is worn on the body someplace and it requires a fastener of some sort. And we're using a sterling silver tie tack finding because it goes better with the, with the argentium back of this disc. And we're going to be using easy solder because there's no need to use medium or hard solder and the Mokumegane tends to have a lower melting point than either parent metal. So we're going to play it safe. Um, the metal, surface of the metal is already clean. We have our finding and a holder, a little set of spring tongs. We use a little bit of flux. And I'm using paste flux. And a pallion of easy solder, which I'm gonna melt first. And this is rather more than I would actually need, but because it's on the back, that'll work out okay. Light the torch. I like aerocetylene for most soldering operations. You don't have to worry about adjusting the flame, and it's a fairly soft flame. It's good for larger pieces like this. Smaller pieces, uh, oxyacetylene or an oxypropane torch is uh, frequently preferable because they're more accurate. Lift the pallion with the probe. Place it. Uh, I'm going to be quenching in water first. I don't want to have pickle all over the place. That's done. After soldering, we need to do our pre-etch treatment. This is where we get rid of any small dents that have occurred during the fabrication process. We start out with a clean piece of metal where all the chemical action on the surfaces of the silver and the copper um, are basically wiped clean. It's like starting with a nice clean slate. For the purposes of etching and mokumegane in general, we do not bring things to a high polish at this stage. Uh, all the surfaces need to be matte, they etch more cleanly, and the, the effect of the acids on the metals is going to change the surface anyhow. So I like to use the scotch Bright wheels because they're very, very fast, they're aggressive, uh, but they also don't leave a lot of marks. Basically two stages in polishing, one is just stripping where I use a fine scotch Bright wheel, the second stage, and you'll watch me ch change them, is to get more of a smoother, finer surface for which I use some um, plastic abrasive wheels uh, here in varying grades. We'll get started now. Uh, 
buffing and finishing is with 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 um, motorized equipment is some of the most dangerous work there is in the whole jewelry shop. It's very easy to hurt yourself. Gloves are a good idea. Um, this is a fairly large piece and if it gets thrown it'll bang up against the back of this. If your piece gets hot it's a good idea to have water next to it. Keep it cool. You can see it's a little coarse finish right there. I'll stop and change the wheel. Refine the surface a little bit. One thing you want, don't want to do when you're finishing Mocha Megane is to use a compound or a process that smears the surface. You want to cut. You want to, if you smear, you can have your different layers being dragged over the other layers and then you get a very dirty edge. I'm starting out with a moderately coarse brush. And these are plastic, plastic laden abrasive brushes. You can use Tripoli on a nylon brush. It works just fine. You know, motorized is fastened by hand, but you can do this by hand. There we are with this. Change wheels again. And we are ready to etch. For etching, we take our cleaned piece, and if there happens to be any intermediate grease uh, that's put on it between polishing and etching, we need to make sure that's removed. We've got to start with a dead clean surface. Um, and we want to preferentially etch one metal over the other to create a surface topography as well as a visual topography. In this case, for etching silver copper material, I like to use multi-etch. It attacks only copper alloys. It does not attack silver at all. It can be somewhat irritating to the lungs when, uh, if you breathe it. So we're using this, doing this under a hood to, uh, to prevent that from happening. Two stages, we etch, and then we dip in a solution of baking soda to kill the acid of the etch so it can be safely handled Then we examine it. The big problem to avoid on this is over etching, which means that all the copper is removed and all you see is silver. We want to have some copper there so we can get a color contrast off the uh, metals, which means we pay attention to it. Do not do this by walking away. You can tell you're getting proper action by a bubbling surface on the, sur on the surface of the metal. Okay, the etching looks like it's deep enough now, so you know, I've been dipping it and looking at it and dipping and looking at it. It looks like it's deep enough now. Take it out, looks fine. Good test is run your fingernail over the surface. Make sure you can feel that topography there. I'm feeling it pretty nice. Um, our next step is to put a patina on this, and first we have to do a little bit of pre-patina polishing, and it'll bring us back to the polishing station now. After etch, I'd like to take away the, the harshness on the copper, that surface a little bit, and the quickest way to do it is to use that fine, fine bristle wheel again. Very, very light. I do not want to aggressively polish the surface, because that'll ruin the topography that I've spent a fair amount of time trying to develop. It's best to do your patination right after etching. The surface of the metal is absolutely clean and also chemically very, very active because it has not had a chance to interact with the air. If you can keep your work wet uh, between stages, it's really the best idea. Um, to ensure that the, metal, the surface of the metal is active and also to give it a lightly matte surface, I like to use something called No Name Patina Prep, which is a mixture of um, a mild acid and a very fine pumice. And then for coloring this material, I'm gonna use something called Baldwin's Patina, invented by yours truly, which will color copper, but not silver. At this point, if we wanted to have a slightly higher polish in the silver, we would use a rouge cloth 
to, um, to uh, gentle use of the rouge cloth on the surface to uh, brighten the highs on the silver. But at this point, we are done. Ready to go. Put in the finding. And patina chemicals can be very, very varied. You could use liver of sulfur, that will do one thing. Baldwin's patina will color only copper. There are books on patina that like have thousands of formulas. Go out and try them, experiment, it's a lot of fun.